So in this video, I will be talking about my lovely and new Nikon Z30 and my overall final reviews of using this camera for a month now, specifically for content creation. So you don't know my story yet. I actually bought the Nikon Z50 right here as my initial replacement or upgrade to my Nikon D5200, which I've been using for pretty much the longest time now. And that was back in 2019 when they just released their first lineup of APS-C mirrorless cameras. And this was like, oh my God, autofocus, 4K video. Finally, I can upgrade from the DSLR to mirrorless. But then they came out with like a weird screen, as you know, and there's a lot of reasons why I decided to get rid of this technically. Check that video out first. And then it wasn't until recently where I decided to pick up the Nikon Z30. And yes, you know, I got a comment here. I see no point getting the Nikon Z50 when you're getting the Nikon Z30 when I have the Nikon Z50. I'm like, yes, if I knew the Nikon Z30 was in the lineup, I wouldn't have gone in the Nikon Z50. But if you want to actually know the exact differences, check that video out first, which I recommend which one you should actually get. But let's get into my actual review of using this camera for exactly one month now. So the exact TLDR of these two cameras is you're looking at the exact same. The Nikon Z30 uses the exact same processor and sensor as the Nikon Z50 and the ZFC. The only difference is the actual re removal of the electronic viewfinder and little things that actually cater towards more of a content creator type of background. We're looking at having unlimited record time, having an articulating LCD where you can actually see yourself so you don't have to rely on things like Snapbridge. You have a recording tally light where you can see that, hey, I'm actually recording right now. A better built-in stereo microphone where, as you can see, the Nikon Z50, you have this little hole here, which isn't the greatest for microphone capture and audio capture where the Nikon Z30 has left and right channels for audio recording. But of course, if you are a serious content creator, you wouldn't use an external microphone and audio source. So going into the exact pros of why I like the Nikon Z30 so much is that it has eye detection, eye auto AF. And in my Nikon Z50, it didn't have that in video. And I didn't understand that. Maybe they were saving that for the Nikon Z50 Mark II, but the Nikon Z30 has eye detection. And one of the reasons that I upgraded because I technically downgraded in their 50 to 30 is because when I held up things, right, it would detect something else like this microphone, the Blue Yeti I started using as an eye. I'm like, or as a face, and it, it would not track my face, which is already right here. I'm like, what, what's going on? I updated to, I upgraded to the Nikon Z30, no issues whatsoever. I literally have a book in front of my face. It still has eye detection being, I lost my face there. There's eye detection, get back on. Autofocus for eye detection is crucial when it comes to video, which is why the Nikon Z30 has geared towards me so much as a content creator. Like I already said, it has a tally light. How many times have you guys thought you pressed record, but you did not record? And you have to redo that all over again. As a content creator, you know how much of a pain in the butt that is. But luckily for the Nikon Z30, there is a recording lamp, lamp light, tally light. And what's cool about it is you can actually change the brightness from one, two, and three. This is great for when you're vlogging yourself outdoors and it's harder to see that light. You also have a bigger record button. So if you were vlogging and hand holding it, you know exactly, oh, this is record. Whereas in the Nikon Z30, Z50, it's a little tiny light here. Another pro of using the Nikon Z30 is that there is unlimited record time or as much as your SD card, as well as the battery life. Technically, you can record unlimited. For the most part, it, you're looking at two hours, which is more than enough when it comes to having a record limit. 
in comparison to the other models where you only have 30 minutes of recording time. Another pro of using the Nikon Z30 is that you can have power charging while you're recording, where the Nikon Z50, you can only do that if the camera is off. So technically, if you ran out of a battery, you ran out of battery. And last but not least, if you were looking at terms of price point, another great advantage of the Nikon Z30 is that it is $150 to $200 cheaper than the Nikon Z50, as well as the ZFC. But let's go into the cons of using the Nikon Z30 now. The actual cons where I've actually used this, I've played around with it, and actually made a lot of content on my other channel, link description below if you wanna check that out. And what are my gripes about the Nikon Z30? So allegedly, I got a lot of comments of people talking or complaining about 4K overheating issues. I have not had seen any of that yet, and I have no issues. So I don't know what's the big, you know, fuss about it. Or maybe it's just me. But if there is a future issue with that, I will let you guys know. But I do have one of the cons is the Nikon Z30 is a battery eater. Compared to my Nikon Z50, this camera just like runs through batteries. Like, I have four of these batteries, the ENEL25, and they would usually last me around, you know, an hour per battery. But I don't know why with the Nikon Z30, it just seems the battery just eats and drains a lot quicker. And of course, the other con of using Nikon Z30 is of course it's low light autofocus performance using an APS-C camera these lineups doesn't matter if it's the z50 the zfc it's all the same there is poor really poor autofocus in a low light situation so that's something you have to be aware of as long as you are well lit this autofocus works superb you do not have to worry about whether or not you're in focus or not focus but the minute that you are really backlit or, you know, low light, you can start to see the camera start to struggle. But that's something that you should be aware of. And of course, the last con, but not is really a con if you're a content creator, is that missing component of uh, electronic viewfinder, where if you were to take photos, you have to rely on the LCD. But we all know as content creators is that if it's really sunny, shooting photos with the LCD isn't your best bet and this camera is geared towards content creators, not photographers. So having using this camera sometime now, do I recommend it within this price point? Hell yes. With the fact that you have interchangeable lenses and the fact that Nikon uses both APS-C and full frame cameras with all the same lenses, it's great if you have, let's say, a Z6, Z7, you can use the same lenses on this Z30. Having staying within that lineup where the Nikon Z30 can be your B camera. It's geared towards entry level people who want to upgrade from using their smartphones for TikToks or Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts and not get into the whole lineup of using or paying five, six thousand dollars for their main camera. My overall gripe with this is I wish I would have waited a bit for you know this camera to come out, but now hey. I have the Z50 and the Z30, not intentionally, but unintentionally. And that was my overall final review of the Nikon Z30. Do I recommend it? Yes, if you're a content creator and you're looking for a little camera that you can upgrade your quality to 4K, looks great. You can color grade this on a flat picture profile, of course. Of course, you have to also be worried about having battery life. There are other alternatives of using, let's say, a dummy battery so you can have this constantly recording but you can't just simply plug this into your computer and have it charge and record at the same time, which I think is a downfall. If you guys think that you wanna get the Nikon Z30, I highly recommend it if you're a content creator. If you're looking for a more pro-grade, pro-consumer camera, this is a grade B camera. Check out in the link description below if you wanna check out the Nikon Z30 kit. I highly recommend you get this camera with the dual kit combo. 16 to 50 as well as the 50 to 250 and you are set for content creation, photography and video. There's no point getting the body alone unless you already have that kit set up with the Nikon Z50. If you watch this far, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Helps me help you to let you guys know that you like this video. 
and let me know in the comments what type of videos you want to see next. And my name is Peter. If you want to get serious about content creation and learning the best camera gear, what's the best how to video, what's the best settings, so you can get the best quality that you can out of your camera, I have a full crash course in the description below. Help me help you. You're watching Broken Vision Collective, where we all start with nothing, but you can always create something. Oh yeah. And of course, if you were in the Nikon Z lineup, this is pretty much a no-brainer as a B camera or a vlogging camera. Because of the Nikon Z30, you can also have the F to Z mount where you can use all of your older Nikon glass and put that on and still have and use those legacy lenses, right? Should I slap on my uh, 35 1.8 so you guys can see? Maybe I should.